what's the plan for today? Today, a uh, quick, quick stand up. Uh, so I guess first thing is we'll be meeting with a, with a friend, right? Hopefully. Yeah. Yeah, uh, there is like an interesting meeting coming coming up. Uh, we will uh, keep you posted. Uh, we are not yet sure if the person will be available available because it's. Uh, but he, he, she, they confirmed at mm -hmm. first, so yeah, we are it's, hopeful. It's confirmed, but at the same time, yesterday something uh, happened on the internet, right? And <laughs> this person is very public. Yeah, it needs to like uh, maybe yeah. uh, deal with with something and. Yep. Joe we'll Biden, we we are with you. <laughs> so that's the that's the first thing on our list for today. Uh, we would like to also do a tour of the car because yeah, it's interesting. Like we, like like we said, outside the side. We, we talked a lot while driving yeah, I, the car. I want to show you how it bounces, yeah, up and down. It's it's interesting and how it's like. And uh, I, I'll drive, and Kuba will be on the uh, rear side of the car in the trunk. <laughs> I, I think it's reverse, but yeah, we will see. <laughs> <laughs> But anyway, we will also like to do a tour of the design quality yep. and uh, all the all the things. Then we want to visit Chinatown, uh, one of the biggest, if not the biggest, Chinatown in the US. Uh, pretty interesting. And probably in place. the world. <laughs> and maybe probably in the world. Um, and it's also one of the best districts in San Francisco, one of mm -hmm. the most rich and interesting yeah. to, to, to visit. A lot of hills and uh, there's a cable car coming like through that. Cool. Um, yeah, and you were invited, or we were invited, yeah. uh, to do an interview, right? Yes, we are invited to do an interview, or with, with uh, or a like, a like a video on YouTube together with uh, Berg from Polar yeah, Border so, .sh. So maybe let's talk a little bit. What is Polar? Uh, so Polar is a startup, this company that uh, aims to make funding of open source projects possible, and it makes it so much easier. And they are based in uh, uh, Netherlands? In, in Sweden. In Sweden, yeah. Mm -hmm. They're based in Sweden. Uh, and yeah, yeah, so the, the profile is that you basically create an account and you connect your GitHub uh, projects, private repositories, then you set up some plans and it, they automatically allow people who pay uh, the, you the money, the, the, they give the access to the repositories. Or some uh, extra features. Or extra features, extra like Discord, content, Discord yeah. server or yeah. access to extra blog posts or, and so on. So they, they are doing an amazing job. They already, uh, I, I kind of feel they implemented this feature for, for us, but mm -hmm. I guess it was on a, on a list, but maybe they yeah, prioritized it for, for us. Mm -hmm. uh, they added uh, yearly annual plans to, to, the, to the app. So we'll be using that to fund our next project, actually. Yeah, one of our projects. And they, yeah, and then we are invited to do the video together. Yeah. So thank you, Birk, for, <laughs> for the invitation. And let's maybe quickly go a little back because Polar is very interesting. Polar is a, a way because open source had this problem or yeah. still has this problem that if you want to focus on open source, uh, it's difficult to earn money because people request a lot of things or fix the, uh, the bugs or add new features and you have to spend some significant time on that. Yeah, GitHub, GitHub did some things to make it mm -hmm. easier, but it's not that convenient still. Yeah, so Polar adds a layer on top of the, you're, you're talking about GitHub sponsors, right? Yes. So you can directly spo sponsor or support a person. With, with Polar, you can go a little bit further, a step uh, beyond that. So you can like, g it gives you more flexibility and uh, additional features like more content or maybe uh, it's still evolving and they are moving very fast. As you say, uh, we asked for some change in how you can uh, ch charge people for the access yep. uh, from like monthly to, to really and it was implemented like in, a, in an instant right away, I would yeah. say. Yeah, and right away. Faster than we could even utilize it yeah. because we are, we are thinking like, maybe in a six months they, they, they have something. Yeah, so they're moving very fast yeah. and it's pretty interesting. So they're adding features and... Uh, and recently, I don't, want, I, I, I don't want to do this episode about Polar, but recently Mitchell Hashimoto joined Polar mm -hmm. as, the, as, a, as an advisor. Uh, yeah, so because... I'm, I'm not sure if everyone, is, uh, everyone knows who uh, Hashimoto is. And... It has nothing to do with the health. <laughs> <laughs> Let's drop this, maybe. Yeah, I, I got distracted. Sorry. Uh, so, so who is who is here? Yeah, so, so Mitchell is an interesting person. Uh, he was one of the speakers on, uh, at the conference I was organizing in 2012. So, what a coincidence, right? Yeah, it's it's funny because 
where I was talking with him, it was in Brno, it was, the conference was called, it was called Rupee or Rupai. It was a conference about Ruby and Python, and he was at that time known for a tool called Vagrant, which was like mm. a, I, I a used to use it, yeah. Tool for uh, like creating a virtual boxes and uh, something yeah. like a before Docker times. Or yeah, but it was fully f full VMs instead yeah, of you just you could uh, uh, create a full VM. And I was talking with him, and uh, he was doing a talk. I don't remember the talk. But he said that can he at the beginning introduce his new company because he, he just started a company. Uh, and what was the company, Kuba? Uh, and the company was um, HashiCorp, <laughs> which is now <laughs> a very well known uh, yeah. company that created things like Terraform, uh, like uh, everything related to in infrastructure. They, they did like amazing job, and uh, yeah, it was like 12 years ago. Mm. And now he, yeah, and what I was thinking about <laughs> is that he uh, kind of left uh, uh, HashiCorp and he focus, is he focusing right now on a personal project, which is a terminal. <laughs> he uses this uh, new programming language called Zig, the same language that is used by BAN, uh, JS. Uh, so he uses that uh, to create a, a terminal emulator in Zig, explores uh, like was possible and I think he it aligns nicely it's, because it's, it's like called ghosty ghosty yeah. double T and uh, yeah he um, it's, it's a nice match that's what I yes yeah. like wanted to say yeah so so a lot of serendipity yeah uh, it's, it's kind of luck. interesting how it's sheer luck uh, yeah so that's that's one thing and what else we have for today so we also are working on this project of so we are using Polar for what exactly? For What's your next store. Yeah, your next store. It's a it's a project by us, our side project. It's a boilerplate for creating very small storefronts, like if yeah. you're a single and merchant or like a selling some like a very yeah I don't know, jewelry handmade yeah, something, something or ebooks. You can qu quickly create a store. Yep. With our and it's amazing uh, in terms of performance and simplicity. So we just a few clicks and you're you're done. Or maybe even one click, I would say. Yeah. <laughs> we just want to do it like super something like WordPress. What WordPress did for blogging. Yeah. Something that you can just use right away, and because it's written in Next JS and, and provided, integrates with Stripe very closely. And, uh, yeah, you can uh, have this flexibility, so you can like uh, yeah. add features and. Uh, but right uh, from the beginning with our boilerplate, you can like set up the sto store instantly. And uh, so we are using Polar for that. We want to be able to focus on this project and at the same time uh, earn uh, money. Yep. Uh, because we, we, we want to provide a support uh, for all the people that will be using it and, yep. and all that. And we also uh, added, uh, so we've been accepted to Stripe. Yeah, be because the Ironic Store is closely integrated with uh, Stripe. It, mm -hmm. it relies on Stripe. Right now, it's the only provider that we are using. We want to keep it simple. And yeah, the integration with Stripe is essential. And we've been accepted, first of all, I think last week we, we were accepted as Stripe partners. Uh, so this gives us some additional benefits and we can uh, apply for next level of the partnership as well. But just today, yeah. <laughs> we got access to a new Stripe, to, to new Stripe checkout beta, uh, which is not publicly available yet. It's only accessible to, to certain projects, and it allows you to use uh, all the features of Stripe Checkout, which is automatic taxes calculation, shipping rates, uh, a currency conversion, and stuff like that. Uh, but do it without redirecting to Stripe. You can you can keep the user on your website. You just but use co React components basically to, to do that. It was not possible previously. But just for the context, uh, yeah. Uh, but before you, you had something like Stripe Elements, right? Yeah. So, so you had to implement all the tax yeah. taxes calculation, the, the currency by, by and so on, yeah, mm -hmm. on, your, on your own. And now it will be uh, integrated right into the Stripe elements, Stripe, Stripe checkout elements or whatever so they call it. like another convenience uh, layer, I would say, on top of Stripe. And we wanted our store to just exclusively con uh, like integrate with Stripe yeah. because Stripe is so, so popular and uh, so many people use it. So this will give us even more, um, I think, flexibility and, and in a way, will help people set up uh, stores 
Yeah, so um, it's faster. definitely better user experience because we are yeah, we yeah, are just a team of two people. It's impossible for us to test every combination of currency and country, for example, mm -hmm. or tax configuration. But I believe if Stripe implements it, it's it's well tested and it will be more reliable than if we if we did it. Yeah, and so. uh, last thing related to that, uh, related to your next storefront uh, and to Next.js, is that uh, we are closely following uh, a person, uh, Shat Sien, a person who's uh, focusing, who now the person is working at Vercel. Yeah, very private person. Uh, <laughs> and focusing on, um, like on many things, but generally uh, they released um, a library called Shat Sien UI. Yep. And we decided to exclusively use that because we just, a few days ago, we seen a tweet by Shat uh, Sien uh, that they are working on um, e-commerce components. E-commerce e components. Blocks. Yeah, I, I think they started with uh, like the ones related to dashboards, so the insight. Yep. And we we also want to use them. So instead of because if you are connecting to Stripe, you can like configure or set up everything directly in Stripe. Mm -hmm. But with our solution, you could also use uh, some kind of yeah, dashboard. Con convenience. Yeah, as a convenience layer, uh, and we will be using those uh, components as they are created. Yep. Uh, so, so right now, the, the whole checkout flow is implemented using Shad CNUI. Yeah. And, uh, and yeah, we are platform. using multiple components, and it's all pl placed together really well, and it's beautiful. <laughs> yeah, it's beautiful and minimal, and I it's, think it's people would... It's stunning design, so... And given that uh, Shad CN UI is also uh, running or behind this new project by Vercel called V0, mm. Yeah, uh, AI. AI tool that allows you to you describe a UI you want or you, you upload a, a, an image of a UI and it generates that for you using just and UI components. So I think this, this fits nicely mm. if someone wants to uh, extend the store or create something uh, else. Yeah, so yeah, that that's, would be all for today. Yeah, uh, follow us along. Nice, uh, how, how do you Call it in English, like like a brace bracket. Yeah, uh, like starting a, with AI and finishing the exactly the vlog uh, with AI. <laughs> it, it was a nice bracket, yeah. Let's say that. I'm not sure <laughs> if that's a question to our American audience. If that's yeah, especially the uh, literature majors. <laughs> if that's what, yeah. Is this the is this the right idiom? Okay, so uh, follow us along, and uh, yeah, we'll see you today. Yeah, and we'll, we'll share more, more details of the car and the trip uh, yeah. later today. Hi, so now it's time for a tour of the, of the car, yeah. <laughs> of this immense beast. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is the Cybertruck from cyber Tesla. Cybertruck, yeah. Mm. <laughs> so where, where should you start? Maybe outside. Uh, what's interesting, I'm not sure if it's uh, visible in the camera, but the car is very long, right? Yeah. I, it's huge. It's huge. It's like much longer than I would expect. This is like a, you know, <laughs> <laughs> something of that, of that sort. So when you drive it, um, yeah, around the city, it's, it's yeah, a bit difficult. It's difficult. You have to uh, pay attention. So th here you can like open it with the buttons, right? Yeah. Like I would say, regular stuff. Get in. Yeah. The um, what's interesting, the wheels and the tires are pretty huge. Yeah. Yeah. Even compared to you. Even compared They're to me. They're like huge. So let's maybe do. Uh, <laughs> Let's go back a little bit and we'll show it up front and then maybe discuss some uh, like a minor issues. Yeah, imperfections. Yeah, imperfections, that's a good word. Mm-hmm.
Yeah, so that's the... Uh, so let's start at the, at the beginning, uh, on, at the front. So we were like looking at uh, all the ways it's aligned and it's not perfectly aligned and it's very, uh, I would say, rough. Very rough. rough. Yeah. On the edges, <laughs> at the edges. Yes. So that's the reason you mentioned me how that it's not allowed to drive this car in Europe, right? Yep. You it's one of the reasons. Yeah, because if you get just even with my hand, it's very. Um, yeah, you can you can slice some tomatoes or <laughs> cucumbers <laughs> yeah. on it. Exactly. Uh, so that's the inside. So how how do you open the frank? Uh, you have to press uh, the um, button inside. Yeah, the button on the on the inside. Let's do that. So it's called frank, as with every <laughs> Tesla. So basically, everything is controlled on the touch panel, right? Or the app. Or the app. But okay. a funny story, I couldn't add this uh, because I also own a Tesla and I couldn't add this to my app. Uh, my app is European, it seems, and it's not compatible with the... Cybertruck is only compatible with US Tesla apps, it seems. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. So what else? Maybe let's see inside now. Yeah. Uh, so opening the doors, you have this button here. You, you, you kind of like really grab it, so you just press <laughs> it and then it comes out and then you just open it. There is a huge space, I would say, in, in, on the inside. The uh, back seats. Yeah, and there is also the touch panel on the back seat, right? Yeah, there is a touch panel. You can, you contr can control the airflow, AC, even the music. Even the seats. And the seat, yeah, yeah the, the position of the, of the front seat. The, the passenger seat, only the passenger seat, seat of yeah. course, but it's unexpected that you can do that. You cannot do this with a uh, regular Tesla, I think, to control the yeah. passenger seat. And uh, uh, w what I really like about this car is that you can control the height of the, yeah, of the vehicle. Yeah, let's show that, yeah. So maybe if we get a bit further with the camera, it will be visible. And <laughs> this is how I roll. <laughs> what, what, what height is it? Is it medium or high? It's high. It's high, okay. It's growing on me. Yeah. And this is it. <laughs> yeah, pretty cool. Yep. You have four types of uh, driving, right? Maybe we could show inside. Yeah. Um, so you have comfort. It's dynamics, I think, right? Yep. Yeah, you have comfort, comfort sport. Comfort, sport and off-road. Off-road, yeah. yeah. And custom, which is, I think... And you can mixed. enable disable brakes. Uh, it's very interesting. But you cannot control the, how to, how to call it, the amount of regenerative braking, right? Usually in electric cars, you, you can do that, yeah. but here it's just either on or off. So okay. you have to get, uh, like, uh, adjust, uh, I mean, to the feeling. Yeah, so it's, uh, I got some questions on LinkedIn about the quality of the interior as well. Uh, so I would say it's not, I'm not a car specialist. It's not like a usual European car, like Audi, right? Or uh, I, don't I mean, know. it's it's pretty good. It's pretty it's for it's for a Tesla. Yeah, yeah. It's <laughs> it's. I would say for me, it's it's good. Yeah, but there are some imperfections, small ones, like it's not maybe properly aligned or yeah. I don't know. Just minor things. Generally, it feels uh, I would say premium to some extent. Yeah. And uh, there's uh, a lot of space. Uh, you you see, the way you you see that the car is very high, right? It's like a SUV. So it's also nice, nice feeling. But what I dislike about this car is that you control everything on the touch screen, even the gears. If you want to park or yeah. drive or reverse, you do it on the touch screen, which is a bit weird. The same goes for the and uh, the yeah. changing the when you have to turn. You have to if you wanna if you wanna start the car, you need to do on the on the touch screen, then reverse the same. And parking is the same. It's it's a bit unexpected, but it's the same for every Tesla, I think, right? Uh, well, the, the way you change gears is only like that for this car and uh, the new Tesla, the new, new Model Tesla, 3. Yeah. And I think, uh, I'm not sure about the Plaid. I think, yes. So yeah, that's the, that's the car. It drives pretty nicely. Uh, <laughs> nice acceleration. Ah, uh, yeah, that's, that's a very nice thing. Could you, could you turn it on? The way it, uh, because there's like a one piece of, uh, I don't know how it's called in English. Wiper. Wiper, exactly. 
So the wiper is huge, and the way if you could turn turn it on, you mm -hmm. know. Not sure if it's possible with the car off. No. Ah, yeah, maybe. Oops. Now this. Yeah, the amount of like of space it, it grabs when it moves, it's pretty interesting. <laughs> Yeah, so... I would say in person it looks better than on in the video, in the videos I've seen. I don't know. It's yeah. still kind of Kind of unusual. rough at the edges. But yeah, rough. <laughs> very brutal. But I guess that's the idea, right? Brutal... Uh, shape. Yeah, but the driving experience is really nice. Yeah, though. yeah. I, I <laughs> es like especially driving. in the sport mode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I wonder how much it uh, weights. You know. We can. Yeah, we can check check it out. We 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 came unprepared. I think. Is it inside? You think? Okay. We have some help from the from the crew. Let's check it out. Yeah, there it is. Ah, oh, yeah. It's written over here. So what does it say? Okay, so four tons, right? No, it's maximum with... Uh, ah, with everything inside? And uh, even Cloud. with uh, uh, some, some, something on the back. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, there's some car coming. It's, it's more than two tons for the car. They are turning. Yeah. Uh, there's one more thing, uh, Matthew, we can show it, uh, the rear view. So usually mirror, right? the mirror, yeah, usually the back is like uh, closed, so you cannot look here because it's like a blank and the rear mirror is uh, digital and displayed over here or you can move it to, to different place. I don't know how to turn it on when the car is, uh, when the car is in the parking mode. Uh, but anyway, you can, if it's closed, maybe we should like first close the the back. The dashcam viewer unavailable. Yeah. Oh yeah. Something. Yeah, but the the rear mirror is different. It's like displayed permanently on the screen while while you're driving. And I had this habit that I was looking up right when, when driving, and you have to like look there when the bag is closed. Uh, yeah. So that's pretty much it. I yeah, I say. think this is this is it. I hope you enjoy it. Pretty nice experience. Uh, yeah. yeah, and if you are in San Francisco, come visit us and we can take a drive together. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we we had one person ask us on yeah, Twitter, yeah. but he didn't respond. So yeah, but so pl please respond. <laughs> <laughs> See you in the next one. In Silicon Valley, two dreamers land in San Francisco with a garage, a cyber truck, and big AI dreams, but no cash. They're set on joining the tech legends who started in garages just like theirs. Despite being broke, they're relentless. The cyber truck isn't just a ride, it's a statement. They're here to shake things up. Night and day they code, facing rejection and learning from every setback. Their project slowly evolves from an idea into something that could change the world. Success in Silicon Valley is elusive, but it's the chase that matters. Whether they'll become tech giants or cautionary tales is up in the air. But one thing's for sure, they're on a journey worth watching, armed with nothing but a dream, a garage, and a cyber truck.